today we're talking about the OXO single serve pour over brewer with this nifty little water reservoir on the top. I've been playing around with it for a week or two now, and for a very specific type of customer, more on that later, it's actually pretty neat and I think you're going to enjoy it. The upshot is it's not going to be anywhere near the control and not quite the quality of a typical pour over brewer, like Hario V60 or Kalita Wave or that sort of thing. But it's still, in my book, a huge step up from just about any inexpensive automatic coffee maker, especially any sort of pod-based or capsule-based system. So let's take a look at the brewing process, what it does and doesn't do well, and some tips I've learned for getting better cups out of this guy. I have a lot of pour-over coffee brewers, like a lot, a lot. But the one thing they all have in common is that they require a few simple items to actually work. You need a grinder, a scale, and a kettle. But what if you don't have a grinder, a scale, one kettle, or at least you want to skip the hassle of actually measuring that precisely? Well, that is where the OXO brewer fits in. One of the most important factors in a good pour over brew is gently, evenly, and steadily distributing water around the coffee grounds. The goal is for all of them to be equally immersed so that none end up over extracted or under extracted relative to all the others. Normally with a pour over, we use careful technique and a gooseneck kettle to accomplish that. But the OXO uses this reservoir on top, which has a series of holes of slightly different sizes that help maintain a nice slow, steady pouring rate. Fill it up to the desired line, and that's really all the more there is to it. It is a Melita style dripper, meaning it has an elongated bottom with a single tiny hole as opposed to a V60 style dripper and all of its knockoffs and descendants that come to a point rather than a line at the bottom and have a large hole. That large hole lets water pass through very quickly because the dripper itself provides no resistance in particular. So the Melita style with that one tiny hole is uh, by far the more consistent even if less flexible of the two. And another popular type of pour over dripper is the Kalita Wave or in this case the Fellow Stag which is kind of adapted from the wave. In either case there's a bunch of small holes on a round but flat bottom. So again the Melita style OXO dripper is pretty different from that as well and provides a much more restrictive flow rate. Keep in mind that you'll need a cone style filter on the left which is available at just about every supermarket I've ever seen. It's not going to be easy to make a V60 style dripper like I'm holding on the right actually work with the OXO. I would not recommend that. You'd have to fold it in some pretty strange ways so just get the cone filters. Again they're cheap and they're ubiquitous. So with that out of the way, let's brew our initial cup exactly in keeping with the instructions from OXO. For starters, we'll take one of our filters and fold both of the seams so it fits nicely in the brewer and doesn't shift around or prop itself up in weird ways. Strictly speaking, that's not part of OXO's instructions, but that's a pretty important tip that I recommend doing anyway. We're going to shoot for about 8 ounces or 240 milliliters which they say requires 13 grams of coffee or two tablespoons and two teaspoons. Now, frankly, that's pretty finicky. I don't want to have to use two different measuring spoons. So I would just use three, but a bit shy. Of course, I would really recommend using the scale, but I, I realize part of the appeal of this sort of brewer is not dealing with the extra equipment. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to do. Just keep it as simple as possible. Now we're going to pour in our water just off the boil. One big issue of keeping the water in a reservoir like this as opposed to inside the heated kettle is that a lot of heat will inevitably be lost. So the hotter it starts out, the hotter it's going to end up by the time it does make that slurry of coffee down inside the dripper. I realize OXO says 195 to 205 degrees or something to that effect. But again, I would bring it to a boil and then pour it promptly because we want to maximize the heat so that we maximize the extraction of the coffee. The holes in the water reservoir are very small, so we'll see the level drop extremely slowly here. This is kind of sort of mimicking the pour rate you would, uh, you would achieve with a gooseneck kettle like the one I've got in the background there. Here's a peek inside, you can see the very, very gradual water flow rate. Now, of course, I would normally not recommend taking the lid off while it brews, because like I mentioned earlier, heat retention is extremely important, and that is a bit of a weak point in this design. But uh, just so you can see what it looks like, here we go. 
All right, we see virtually no more drips landing in the cup. So it's time to lift the dripper off, use the lid as a drip catching tray, dump the grounds in the garbage, and enjoy our coffee. So that first cup came out fine. Granted, I'm using a pretty unremarkable coffee from Trader Joe's here, but just for the sake of a, a baseline, we've gotten a decent brew out of the straight off the box recipe. Now the second time around, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently with a couple of tricks that I think will take minimal effort but make a noticeable difference in the flavor of your coffee. Now if you're taking it with cream and sugar, it's debatable whether you'll really be able to tell the difference, but if you're taking it black, in, in my testing, you absolutely will. So the first thing we're gonna do is rinse our filter and preheat our cup. You could, of course, just rinse the filter under the tap, but since we need hot water to preheat the cup anyway, might as well do them in one fell swoop. And while it heats, it is a great time to grind your coffee because, of course, grinding fresh is always ideal. And instead of the recommended 13 grams or two and two thirds tablespoons, I'm gonna actually measure out 15 grams because that ratio of 240 milliliters water to 15 grams coffee is a pretty standard one I use on most pour overs and it virtually always works out nicely. Now I realize you may not have or may not want to use a scale, so you could probably just round that up to a full three tablespoons depending on your grind size and I think that'll get you in the ballpark. So I'll put the coffee grounds in the dripper and this time I'll just give it a quick shake to level the coffee bed. Again, it's critically important to extract the coffee as evenly as possible. So one way we can kind of tilt the odds in our favor is to start out with coffee that's flat or close to flat so that there's no, uh, no parts that remain largely above the water level during the beginning of the brewing process. So I'll pour it in up to the 240 line just as before. However, another thing I'm gonna do differently this time is once it's drawn down to roughly 180 or thereabouts, I'm gonna lift the reservoir slightly, give it a couple of quick swirls to level the bed because um, even though we did do that initial shake, the water's coming directly down from those holes in the center, so the coffee level is gonna be lower in the center where that's happening. And the quick swirl just helps even that out and ensure that the water is dispersed a little more evenly and the grounds are more evenly saturated. And now that the water is out of the reservoir but still inside the dripper, I'm gonna give it one last quick gentle swirl again for the same reason. And from there, we'll just let it do its thing and finish up. So to my palate, this uh, second cup did taste significantly better. It was a little bit richer, chocolatey sort of taste. So if the uh, couple extra steps of preheating, rinsing, and swirling make a difference with a quite mediocre coffee, I suspect, and my testing confirms, that you'll see an even bigger difference with a, a finer coffee. I would recommend adjusting your grind setting so that the entire process takes roughly two and a half to three minutes from initially pouring the water until it's completely drained out. Grind size is really the only significant variable that you have at your disposal, so fine tuning the grind size is effectively how you fine tune extraction and find the right balance between under and over extracted. I should point out that the AeroPress is a terrific alternative for much the same purpose. Fill it up, put the plunger in, and just wait. Then when it's ready, press the plunger down, you've got your coffee ready to go. Only ever so slightly finickier than the OXO, but the plunger gives you much more control over extraction time. You aren't solely reliant on gravity to pull the water through, so you can grind coarser or finer and still get the same optimal extraction time for the coffee you're using. All in all, the OXO Brewer and Reservoir is an easy device to use. I've suggested a couple extra steps that are helpful and very simple, but even without them, you'll still get a solid cup of coffee that is utterly hands-off, is dirt cheap, and doesn't require any other equipment. For those reasons, this setup is not only a great introduction to pour over coffee, but in my opinion, if you need only one to two cups at a time, it's also a better choice than any budget automatic brewer. However, if you enjoy tinkering with your brewing technique and you don't mind having a few gadgets and accessories around, then a more conventional pour over setup is still the way to go. That could be a Hario or Kalita or one of their descendants, or even just taking the reservoir off of the Oxo and pouring directly in, just like with any other Melita style dripper. 
you'll have a lot more flexibility in terms of extraction time, as well as better heat retention for the water, so you can dial in your technique differently for each coffee to get the most out of it. And the farther you go into medium and light roasts, the more important that flexibility becomes. You might be pretty surprised actually at how different the optimal brewing parameters can be from one coffee to the next. As a final note, none of this matters nearly as much as grinding coffee right before brewing and doing so with a high quality burr grinder so you get nice, consistently sized particles that will extract evenly and predictably. That's worth a whole other video, or really a series of videos, but for now, check out this review of my personal favorite hand grinder. It's fairly expensive, but it may be a game changer. I hope that's been some helpful insight into the OXO Brewer from the perspective of someone who probably geeks out on this stuff way too much. And if you have any OXO Brewing tips, then I'd love to hear about them down below in the comments. Thanks for watching and take care.